This event and all of the Parent Ambassador Council events are designed to connect parents to each other and to the university on a personal level for a lifelong connection. That's really how I fit in today. While um, students are here, we want to make sure that you are informed and as educated as possible to support your student and help them achieve their greatest success. We understand that this is a big investment for many parents and it is at least a four-year commitment for your students as well. The Parent Ambassador Council has been focusing our efforts this past year to define, to define a parent curriculum to navigate you through your students' um, class year, providing resources for you and programs such as the one today. I would like to thank the PAC Executive Board and the volunteers that are here today. We certainly appreciate uh, your participation and volunteering today and throughout the year. If you are interested in learning more about the opportunities and getting involved with the Parents Ambassador Council, please visit the check-in table in the lobby. Parents are partners in a variety of ways, as mentors, as uh, providing internships for our students, as ambassadors on campus, in home communities, in connecting with parents and alumni. Also through financial support by gifts that provide scholarships for our gifted and talented students, faculty excellence, student opportunities, and emerging opportunities on campus. PAC is proud to pre present today's program. All the breakout tracks, as I said, will be filmed and will be available online in the coming week. Thank you also to our hospitality sponsor, the Willits Real Estate Group. Doug Willits is an alumnus of Chapman and serves on our board of directors. It is now my privilege to turn the program over to Chapman University's president, Dr. James L. Doty. Oh, your son, fantastic. Yeah, what is, what does he teach? Conducting. Fantastic. That's really I hope he knows me. Does he know me? I'm sure he does. Uh, I, I say that. How many of you were here for the State of the University yesterday? Well, okay, I won't repeat that. Don't worry. We're not gonna, we're, I'm not going to give you another hour-long lecture. But uh, at the State of the University, I related a, a, a true story where uh, I presented our Truman Scholar uh, notification of her award, Chelsea Takahashi, and uh, great honors, but possibly uh, or arguably the uh, most uh, prestigious award given to a student in the country. Uh, only two in California, the Stanford and, and Chapman and Chelsea, and, and they have this tradition where the president presents it at her class and surprises her. And I related the story when I walked down into the class, an adjunct professor, when I walked up, said, who the heck are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I hope he knows me. Uh, you may want to take your, your, your iPhone out, take a photograph. This is Jim Doty. So <laughs> I need to know all of our adjunct. Anyway, I'm not going to give another State of the University address. I think you could even see it online, but you know, that costs an, an hour of your time. I'm going to give you the five minute version, okay, just in case, uh, and maybe add on a few things that I wasn't, didn't have time for yesterday uh, regarding projects that you, you might be particularly interested in. First of all, we had a great year in terms of student achievement, so thank you for giving us your sons and daughters. They are amazing. One of the first things I reported in U.S. News and World Report, we are now number one in student selectivity out of 130 Western comprehensive colleges and universities. Number one. That's, that's U.S. News. It's a measure of SATs, uh, GPAs, uh, admission, admission rates, matriculation rates, they put them all together. And uh, we've been flip-flopping one and two with Trinity University in Texas, so this year we're number one. So that's a testament to the kinds of uh, sons and daughters you're bringing us. 
I reported that our history e-journal won for the second year in a row as the top e-journal in the country. We have a great history department. In fact, the History Honor Society won as the best chapter in the entire country. Our food science uh, they're in a, a like a national bowl competition, the most prestigious bowl competition, and they have won the regional championship, uh, the Western Regional Championship, four times in a row. In in those four years, twice they were the runner-up nationally, and this last year uh, they were the runner-up school uh, for food science and nutrition. And again, an, just an incredible uh, accomplishment. Uh, in the area of business, I so we, we, Princeton Review, U.S. News and War Report, uh, uh, top 100 business schools, MBA programs, top 20 entrepreneurship programs. Our experimental economics group uh, uh, it was rated number three in one category, number two in the country uh, in another category, um, uh, relating to the number of research papers that are produced by our by our faculty. Uh, in the area of uh, performing arts, our plays have won regional competitions. Uh, our, we, and I was very, very pleased to announce that we have a number of new curricular offerings at Chapman, uh, including uh, a uh, new PhD in computational science. Uh, this is, that will be our second PhD. Uh, you may say, well, it's not going to help my son or daughter. We're undergraduate students. They're not, they're not in the natural sciences. But when you have a PhD program, it brings better faculty, better students, more opportunities for joint research for our faculty, and it just lifts the entire profile of the college or the university of which it is a part. Uh, I announced that we will have a new program in biopharmacy, a school of biopharmacy. We are teaming up with the Keck Graduate Institute. It's one of the Claremont schools with Pomona, Claremont McKenna, uh, and Keck. This will be the Chapman Keck School of Biopharmacy, so we will have a pharmacy program. And we're preparing pharmacists for the pharmaceutical industry in that program. New uh, physician assistance program. That will be, the physician assistance will be, our first cohort will be 2015, and for pharmacy it would be 2014. Uh, a new program in strategic management that's part of our comm program that starts this fall. So a number that's just t the tip of the iceberg, but it gives you an idea of the new dynamic offerings that we are that we have uh, in that area. I in the area of construction, I talked about uh, uh, a number of great projects. Next February, we hope we will open um, our historic core classroom building. Uh, if you can think of Memorial Hall surrounded by the three historic buildings, there's kind of an empty area. Uh, that empty, uh, by the way, the way it turned out that, I, you know, you're, you're around a place for so long, you, you get used to it. And you never noticed that there was this empty plot of land. <laughs> you know how you get used to things at home and, you know, it takes somebody else to kind of give you a fresh idea on things. Well, anyway, I'm reading my, my daughter's People magazine. <laughs> Uh, kind of mine too. I love people. <laughs> and here there's this ad. It's a Mazda ad. And it, it's our campus. It's our, our, there's Memorial Hall and there's a, there's a Mazda car in the front surrounded by our, our buildings. And, you know, the first thing I thought of, I thought of was, do they pay us for this, you know? <laughs> but the second thing I noticed was they had a building in the bare spot. They somehow didn't like the bare spot, and they used Photoshop to put this historic building in this empty spot. And I said, well, something's different about this photo, and realized they, that the, the, the empty spot was, had a building. I thought, hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> wow, the light went off, and that's where the new building will be. And evidently, when this was at one time a high school, there were plans for that. We did our due diligence, but now we are finishing the plan, and it will match Roosevelt Hall, which is just across from it. We're going to do everything possible to, 
possible to make it look like one of those historic buildings. As much as we can, there'll be some differences because of uh, uh, different requirements relating to uh, wheelchair accessibility and so on. But that will be completed next February, and that will be mainly a classroom building and a new home for our communications department, which is a great department. That's the program with the new strategic uh, um, management uh, program that they will have there. Uh, we uh, will have a, uh, uh, I, I didn't talk about it yesterday, but we're still moving forward with Filmmakers Village. I didn't talk about it because we still don't know the exact time. It looks now like instead of 2013, because of environmental issues that I think we may need to deal with, it may be 2014, we just don't know. Uh, but, but we're researching the issue, and we should know in the next month or two about uh, timing relating to uh, groundbreaking. Uh, we also, uh, one of the more exciting announcements was uh, uh, yesterday was the fact that we will be breaking ground this year for a new center for the arts. We have raised $64 million. We received the most significant gift in Chapman's history, $32 million from an anonymous donor couple to proceed with that. It's going to be an 1,100-seat facility. It's going to be just, just behind uh, the, uh, uh, the Wallace All Faith Chapel, just in back of where the arduous Global Citizen Plaza is. Uh, so that's going to be an exciting project. We start this year, and we uh, expect completion in 2014. And that's a performance venue that our, our students in the College of Performing Arts really deserve. They are incredibly talented. If you haven't been to an American celebration, we have a Friday, Saturday, the first weekend in November, please come. You will be blown away. I love musical theater. Uh, I just came back from New York City, and I, I and our students are as good as anything you're going to see uh, on the Broadway stage. They are absolutely incredible. Uh, so that's just that's the tip of the iceberg. Like I said, that's that's the you lucked out. That's the five-minute version of what took me a lot longer uh, yesterday to talk about. Uh, and uh, I'd like to conclude uh, by talking about. Um, possibly the most popular new thing we have on campus. It was a construction project we just completed, uh, and uh, the students absolutely love it. It was like, you know, you may ask the question, what's the, what's the most important thing that we've built in the last 10 years? And you see amazing construction. You see the, our wonderful library, the Leatherby libraries. You see Oliphant Hall. You see our chapel. And if you ask the student, what's, 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 has had the greatest impact in your lives? It would be the underground Lastinger parking spot, the uh, parking garage that we have, the thousand seats that we have <laughs> under the athletic field. To them, that was the greatest thing we've ever done. Well, now it may be displaced by this new thing I'd like to talk about, and that is um, our new beach club that we have at, on campus in the residence hall area. Open to commuter students, uh, there's, there's showers, there's lockers in there, and of course our, our resident students. It's absolutely terrific. Uh, when you see it, you're gonna see a pool that was originally designed to be in the shape of a panther head. <laughs> but because of that design, it had little spokes for the, you know, the whiskers, and they, the, the city didn't like the jagged edges. They said it was unsafe, so we had to retrofit it. Now it looks a little bit like a Snoopy head rather than a <laughs> panther head. But nonetheless, it's a fantastic pool, great grounds. There's a fire pit. There's lighting there for the evening. There's a great grassy area. And we have a name for it. It is the Masson Family Beach Club. Uh, it is named for a great family at Chapman University, a very aquatic family. Uh, more than that, Melinda Masson has been uh, a wonderful member, member of our Board of Governors. In fact, she's now chairing uh, the governorship committee uh, on, on that board. Uh, and um, she's married to Maurice, so it's Maurice and Melinda Masson, but they have had two of their sons at Chapman, Ben, who graduated three or four years ago, played on our water polo team. They have a daughter. Unfortunately, we couldn't get her. She's going to Stanford. 
to be on the water polo team at Stanford, that's Milena. And uh, we have a current son who's a senior, Pierre, who is not only on the water polo team, but an All-American. So uh, uh, they are fish out of water, and I couldn't think of a more appropriate family to name our Masan Beach Club right here at Chapman University. And uh, not only can I wax eloquent about this family and Melinda, but she is here now to tell you about her perspective, uh, being a Chapman parent two times over, uh, and now a third college student down the pike. So Melinda Masson, could you please come up and please give her a Chapman University welcome, to Melinda. And good morning again. As introduced, I am Melinda Masson, but most importantly, I am the mother of three children. And so when I was asked to give this opening um, overview of being a parent here at Chapman, I was very humbled and frankly felt this is a little bit over my head. So number one, I am not giving anyone any advice about how to be a parent because it's a daily exercise, as I'm sure you can all attest to. And secondly, what I wanted to do is just really relay what the journey has been like for me as a mother alongside my two sons. And as Dr. Doty stated, soon this fall um, with my daughter. But I want to pause here for a second. When I went to college, it was kind of straightforward. Decent SAT, ACT score, decent grades, not four point and now above, but decent. Fill out a co college application and you're in. If I were to look at any one of you sitting here this morning, I would guess that the incredible pressure and stress that you have experienced getting your freshman into a college has been overwhelming. That being said, can you imagine the pressure cooker feeling your incoming freshman now has coming into a university? I would equate that feeling, from my perspective, to be not unlike their first day of kindergarten, where you are so anxious and that degree of separation is very profound, and they look at you with absolute glee I am now so free and independent of you, Mom. <laughs> so what have I learned? Um, I thought I would start first with sharing a big picture perspective of what the four years of college has meant from my understanding walking alongside my sons. But I did have to ask them first, is there anything that you'd want me to share, not share? And they said, Mom, we have three rules. Number one, don't tell any stories about us. <laughs> Number two, don't try to tell any of our jokes because you can't and you're not funny. <laughs> and number three, end on time. So that being said, what is the large or the big picture learnings I took away? Freshman year, how many freshman parents? It's going to be very, very bumpy. What we ended up saying as a phrase in our family is, okay, they're just young and dumb. Love the student and the child, but you don't have to accept the behavior. That being said, it's very important to stay engaged and involved. College is not the new parent. College needs to be their inspiration, their motivation, and their safe haven of really beginning to mature and develop differently. So you may still get that call to come in and help with some behavior modification. That being said, moving into the sophomore year, it's still aggressively wanting independence. And they question everything and everyone, especially those in a position of authority. But as you move into the junior year, especially if they participated in that semester abroad, you're going to find that it's more of a global questioning. But at times, it may seem cynical. Cynical about what is our government doing and why? What's really happening with our economy? And oh my goodness, what in the world are we going to be able to look forward to in terms of a job market? I would state that a lot of the cynicism I felt was coming from my conversations was really because a fear was setting in. A fear of my journey is now about to move me into a different direction. And what am I going to do with the rest of my life? So as we entered the senior year, I found the senior year to be a year of incredible maturity, incredible unique understanding, 
in-depth conversations that many times surprise me at the depth of understanding, optimism, but still that sense of fear because, oh my goodness, it's really going to happen. I'm going to graduate. And sometimes that fear sets in and says, maybe I should take just one more year, <laughs> just in case. So how does a parent cope with the journey that you are in or about to begin? Especially since they've made Chapman University their university of choice. So I decided to go back to school and I decided to use a spelling exercise to spell out what my journey has meant. And I'm going to spell out the word, word parent because I hope that in doing so, it will show this, the love that I've had of the journey as much as I know my sons have loved theirs. So I'll start with the word P. P is prepare for their tremendous need to separate from you. But I'll also add the word participate. Attend homecoming, attend parent opportunities like this, and especially if your child, your son or daughter is in sports, music, theater, dance, all the major activities that Chapman offers, attend, participate, because they really do want you there, even if it's from afar. A, alignment. Alignment to me was with other Chapman parents. Hundreds of hours on the pool deck, as Dr. Doty inferred, but it was also the greatest opportunity to make great friends, lasting friends, with other Chapman parents. It was a time for us to tell each other stories, get encouragement, use one another as a sounding board, and just really have that sense of belonging, that we're family here at Chapman. With that, I would move into R. R to me was to ratify. Ratify your student's independence. Notice it's taken me a few words to get to ratifying my student's independence. Because I found my sons wanting to share time with me, and they're glad to see me on campus, but it was still wanting to be separate and to have their own identity. Because as a parent, sometimes it's hard to realize it's no longer about us. It's all about them. It's about the great relationships that they are making, the discovery that they are having, and the ability to put it all together. And as hard as it was for me to not pick up that phone or text or get on their email, it is important to let them initiate it. Let them initiate what they want to share with you so that they don't feel like they're having to check in or that we're still watching over them. Um, even though, frankly, I was. So if I didn't get a text within 10 days, I still did text them saying, hey, I just need my I love you, are you okay? Um, so that's okay. The letter E is engage. Not so much always with the students and their experience and friends and conversation here at Chapman, but to engage with Chapman University as a parent. Chapman University, as you heard yesterday and this morning again, it's a growing university. It's not only a growing university, it's innovative. The innovation comes about because it's a listening university. And I would challenge you as you look around the campus as you leave this building today, look at the names on the buildings, the statues, and even the flags around the global fountain. All of that is a representation that Chapman encourages us to dream with them to participate and engage with them, and to make it a reality. And everything you see around you, and everything that you heard that Dr. Doty said is coming, will happen. And it happens not just because of the great faculty and staff and leadership of the university, it happens because of the engagement of parents like us, our students, ultimately the alumni, and the great community members who may never have had a student that was able to graduate from Chapman, but they feel part of the Chapman family. That is what Chapman means in terms of our ability to engage. It's to engage in a university that really creates a Chapman family. That being said, N is to navigate. I'm really not good with technology. So I was so excited when I saw all the changes that Chapman is making to their website and all the ways that we're now going to be able to navigate very simply. And most importantly, 
it's an update of what's happening on the campus that we're all invited to attend, whether it's programs or lectures or activities or events or groundbreaking or celebrations. All of them are wonderful opportunities to again reconnect with one another as parents that are supporting this university. The T of parent, time, talent, treasure. These are the true gifts that we as parents instill in our children and we in turn can contribute and give back to this great university, this Chapman University family. Well, I've spelled out the word parent, and in doing so and in closing, I wanted to share a challenge that I've given my two sons, Benjamin and Pierre. Ben, Pierre, Chapman has been a great launching place for you so that you can now become the change you see that is needed as a new global citizen. Thank you.